Welcome, I am Pastor Bill Fole of the Jesse Lee Memorial United Methodist Church, and this is our online worship service for the weekend of July the 12th. We're so blessed that you are a part of this time with us and encourage you to visit our website, jessieleechurch.com, where you will find about ministries and opportunities for service, connections near and far that are a part of our expression of loving Christ. We also are grateful for the many who have been supporting the church with their financial giving. And you will notice that there is a Give tab on our church website and in the corner of this video if you'd like to make a contribution. You can do that online or you can also mail a check to the church and we will use those resources to be about God's business wherever God leads us. Jesse Lee is a multi-generational church and we are grateful for the ways that God works across the ages and in all people. And we trust that this worship service and the participants will be an inspiration to you as you seek to live out your call. May God bless you this day and welcome to worship. Thank you. 
join me in a call to worship. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. I have sworn an oath and confirmed it to observe your righteous ordinances. I am severely afflicted. Give me life, O Lord, according to your word. Accept my offerings of praise, O Lord, and teach me your ordinances. I hold my life in my hand continually, but I do not forget your law. The wicked have laid a snare for me, but I do not stray from your precepts. Your decrees are my heritage forever. They are the joy of my heart. I incline my heart to perform your statutes forever to the end. Please join me in prayer. O oh God, though we are physically separated, we gather together in your presence with expectation, hungry for an encounter with you, and eager to hear your word. Open our eyes and ears to the presence of your Holy Spirit. May the seeds of your word scattered among us fall on fertile soil. May they take root in our hearts and our lives and produce an abundant harvest of good words and good deeds. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, our teacher and our Lord. Amen. watching on Sunday for our service. We are in the middle of VBS. Today is our last vacation Bible school day. And so we here at VBS, we decided that we're going to teach everyone what we've been learning this week. Where's your monkey? Hey, where's my monkey? Here's the monkey. The monkey is a very important part of VBS. He can hang out no. on, on my shoulder. <laughs> okay, so how about this? If I hold up one of the fruit from our fruit, uh, our fruit salad, can someone tell me the fruit of the spirit that it stands for, and what the Bible says about that fruit of the spirit, what that means for us? Sound good? Okay, so here's the first one. I have to find it. Dig through my fruit basket. Here it is. What does the strawberry mean? The Maggie, love. you're right. It means love. Who should we love, Maggie? Everyone. Everyone. What about the people who are mean to us? Should we love them too? We should? Okay, I'll try. And then this is a really sad looking banana. Oh. But, oh. So bad. It is. It's a very brown banana. But what does our brown banana stand for? Joy. 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 And so, Mia, you. what does joy mean? Poor banana. Oh, we couldn't so, hear that. Could you tell us one more time, Mia? Be happy. It means to be happy, even when bad things are happening. Happy. You're right. Okay, here comes the peach. What does the peach stand for? Peace. 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 Ailish, what does peace, peace. mean? <laughs> um, like, 
the board. <laughs> Everybody getting along. Good, being calm and getting along. And oh, the biggest fruit in our fruit basket. What do you remember? Patience. Patience. Christopher, what does why does the pineapple mean patience? Because if you, if you were gonna eat that, you'd have to take your time. You can't you can't just eat it quickly like a strawberry or an apple. You have to take your time. You do. So what does it mean to be patient? You have to what? Wait calmly. You wait calmly. Good. Patience. And hmm. kindness. Kindness. So, Abby, what does it mean to be kind? Being kind to people. Be nice to people. Christopher, what else? Um, if you if you do act of kindness, it will keep spreading and spreading. It keeps spreading and spreading. You're right. Okay, there's only a few more. And our orange. What does the orange mean? Goodness. Goodness. Brayden, what does it mean to be good? Kind and Mr. like helpful. Kind and helpful. Very good. And then the apple. Faithfulness. Liam, if I am faithful, what does that mean? You don't remember? It means that someone can trust you, right? Just like we can always trust that if you bite into an apple, it's going to taste good. Okay, here's the other big one. The watermelon for gentleness. Because if I threw the watermelon on the ground, it would explode. I can barely eat it like a volcano. You want to come eat it like a volcano? And then our last one. I will lemon. Lemon, lemon for self-control. Good job. Sometimes we can't do everything that pops into our head. Very, very nice. Thank you for teaching everyone about the fruit of the spirit and how we've been learning this week. Are you ready to pray? Okay. We'll fold our hands here. here. I'll fold, I'll fold Clarence, monkey, Clarence's hands. Okay, pray with me. <laughs> Dear God, Dear God, thank you for your fruit. Thank you for your fruit. So we can learn. So we can learn how to live for you. How to live for you. Help us have love, joy, peace. Help us have love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and self-control, and gentleness. Gentleness and self-control. And gentleness, good. So we can show others. So we can show others what it means. What it means to have you in our heart. To have you in our heart. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Okay, so we're going to finish VBS. Say goodbye to all the people watching on Sunday. Okay, bye. Bye. It is now our opportunity to approach the throne of grace with boldness, confessing our sins confident that the one who has come to save us hears our prayers. Please join with me in our prayer confession. Creating God, you bless us with life in each new day. You fill our days with sunshine and joy, yet we confess that we are more often inclined to notice the clouds and the disappointments. We let the gray skies move inside our souls and block out the rays of your grace. We let rain dampen our spirits and spoil your parade of blessings. We give in to external circumstances and blot out the inner radiance of your love that forever seeks to warm and cheer us. Creating God, open our eyes to see your beauty in all things. Open our hearts to feel your affirmation and acceptance. Open our ears to hear your words of forgiveness and to hear you calling our names. Deepen our trust in your will and way, 
and let us always feel the sunshine of your grace. Amen. In the silence of these moments, let us lift before God our personal confession. Hear now the good news. It is the sick who need a physician, not those who are well. That's what Jesus said. That he came to call those who struggled with life, who were in a relationship that wasn't right with God, rather than those who had everything perfectly figured out. The Lord Jesus Christ came that we might have abundant life, those who lack it now. And so the good news is that your confession is heard, that the Lord Jesus Christ has taken the burden of your sin and mine. In the name of Jesus Christ, your confession is heard. In the name of Jesus Christ, our sin is forgiven. Thanks be to God for this great mercy. And now let us pray together as our Lord has taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel according to Matthew chapter 13, verses 1 through 8. That same day Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there, while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went to sow, as, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on the rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredth fold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Will you please pray with me? Come Holy Spirit and give to me the gift of preaching, that the word spoken here would be your word. Come Holy Spirit and fill all of our hearts that we may recognize your voice and follow on the path that you have set for us. In the name of Jesus Christ and for his sake. Amen. Last week, although I didn't announce it, we began a sermon series entitled uh, Wisdom in the Weeds. The, um, the focus of last week in Matthew and where we will be for the remainder of the summer was to have a come to Jesus moment, a, an opportunity to discern how it is that Jesus brings integrity and that the, the journey for us to discover our full selves, our real selves, only emerges as we are honestly open to his yoke, the burdens that he will give to us, the life that emerges as we are walking on purpose on the pathway that Christ has set for us. This week and in the following weeks, we begin in the arena of parables uh, in Matthew 13 for the next three weeks. Jesus tells stories and these stories illustrate uh, or give some, some opportunity to discover what the kingdom of God is like and how it is that we interact. Now, one of the beauties of parables is that they're not just fables that you arrive at a moral and then you're done with the story. But the story has a life that's bigger than a singular meaning. And in fact, for the parable of the sower or the parable of the 
farmer, I think there's at least three different ways that God speaks important truths through this parable and through the interpretation. Uh, the first is the one that many people discover uh, initially, which is, uh, I think, summed up in the question, what kind of soil are you? You remember from the story that there is a sower, and the sower um, sows seeds in a number of places in the garden, and there is a harvest at the end, but only from the seeds that fell in the good soil. Seeds that fell in the rocky soil didn't have any root, and though they began promising, they didn't actually produce anything. And seeds in the weeds were, um, were choked by, by the, uh, the competition for, for light and soil, and, and then there were seeds that fell on the hard ground on the path, and uh, they never really got a chance. And so the question that emerges from that, that reading of the parable is, are you soil that can produce a good harvest? What do you need to do in your life to get rid of the cares of the world or to have a little bit more depth or, or perhaps to be in a place where you can receive the word in the first place? Um, so improve yourself, improve the, the capacity for God to grow things in you. And, and that's a good sermon. And, and I, I think that uh, I sometimes need to hear that, certainly, and, and maybe you do as well. The second, uh, and not the one I'm focusing on today, but my favorite way of reading this, this uh, parable is from the perspective of the sower. The sower plants seeds all over the place. He scatters it, uh, she broadcasts it broadly. And, uh, and so some seed falls everywhere. It falls in lots of places. And the, the farmer is not very careful. Uh, there's no instruction that says, be careful with every seed and where it lands. And so at the end of this, yeah, there's some seed that's wasted, but that's not really a concern because a single seed that lands in good soil produces a harvest of 30 or 60 or 100 fold. So the, the message of the parable for me is uh, don't write anybody off. Don't uh, analyze whether this is a place where God's love or God's word is going to land and be fruitful. Just, just love, offer the, the gift that God gives you wherever it is, and you never know. There's going to be some pieces of good soil that may uh, allow a good harvest. So that's the good news. The, the third way, and the way that I want to focus on today, is this idea that, um, that the soil is the context in which we live our lives, and it's not a level playing field. Uh, not everyone has the same opportunity to be fruitful. And, and what do we do with that? Well, I can tell you, uh, I have planted a garden in front of my home at the carriage house here on campus. It was grass and some other, other things uh, before I began that process. And I got out a rototiller and I turned over the grass and carted some of the, that away. And then I, I dug more deeply and removed rocks. And, uh, and then I, I, I planted plants and continued to weed and laid down some mulch. And, and uh, right now the garden's looking pretty good. Um, we can assume that soil remains the same, and there's nothing we can do about it, and we just kind of hope for the best. But that's not what I do with the garden that I'm planting. I try and get rid of rocks. I, I'm intentional about um, the kind of weeding that is done so that my, my fruitful plants have the best opportunity. We recognize that life is not fair. It's not an excuse, it's an explanation that, that I have advantages. There is some ground that has some soil. I didn't make the soil, but I had an opportunity to plant things there. And I had access to a rototiller, which made it easier than taking a shovel and turning the whole thing over. And I'm, I'm fairly fit, and so I was able to work longer and maybe pull up some rocks that were a little bit bigger. And, uh, and as a result of that, I have an opportunity for a better harvest. Now, there are some folks who there's no soil that they can plant in. Um, there are predators, or at least critters, that may invade more easily. Uh, I, 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 I love all of God's creatures, but some days groundhogs and squirrels, not so high in my list. In, in the world in which Jesus offers this parable, Perhaps the focus is on me individually, and I have to ask, am I, am I the kind of soil that's going to be fruitful? 
Or perhaps it's uh, a place where I need to say I'm a farmer and I, I need to be about spreading God's word. Maybe the message for, for us today, at least for me today, is to say, what responsibility, what ability to respond do I have for improving the fruitfulness of the soil that's around me? Some folks are working two or three jobs and trying to make ends meet and care for their kids, and it's hard for them to concentrate on, on things like the love of Jesus at work in their lives. Cares of the world might be a misplacement of priorities, but it, it might be that the, the challenges of living day to day are just so large that it's hard to concentrate. It, I think it was uh, William Shakespeare who said that there are no philosophers with toothaches. If, if your mouth hurts, it's hard to think deep thoughts. Is there an opportunity for the church to be invested in clearing the way for fruitfulness in people's lives. Perhaps we live in a spiritual environment where the context and the words that people use make it hard for people, other people, to receive the good news. There have been slangs and, and other kinds of, of descriptions that have been leveled at people from various cultures or locations that make it hard for a, a loving message to get through. Perhaps that's one way that the devil produces um, a, an unreceptive heart. This parable that Jesus tells sings in lots of different ways. It reminds me that if my life is right now something that I think is fruitful, it, it might be because I have done a good deal of work but there's also a good deal of things that are not my work. I'm privileged. I had opportunities and access that others didn't have. Some seed falls on the path, and it's just not going to sink in in the same way as my well-cultivated garden. Who are the people that you can help? Where are the places where you might break up hard ground or remove a, a metaphorical rock that's an obstacle for somebody? Or maybe clear away some of the, the weeds that make it difficult for someone to be productive. Jesus invites us into relationship. He invites us to come to him and to receive the burden that he gives to us. And sometimes that burden is other people, that we are called to love neighbors and love adversaries and, and maybe trust that the same seed isn't producing a different harvest or different fruit because there is something inherently wrong with the other. Maybe it's part of our call, our church's call, to be the agent that frees others for fruitfulness. God bless you in your pursuit to be fruitful in your own life, to be a sower of seeds, and maybe to be an agent that produces better ground where God's love may take deep root and allow flourishing plants that enjoy sun and produce good, good fruit. Amen.
us pray. Almighty God, your servants have recognized throughout the ages that we are made for communion with you, that we find no rest until we rest in you. We pray, Lord, for the capacity to look for the comfort that you bring, to trust that you know what is good for us, that even as we abide in the mundane aspects of life, you are there, and that we can, by your grace and power, live fruitfully and encourage others to bear good fruit. We pray, Lord, for those that we hold in our hearts who are in the midst of struggle right now, who feel the pain in body, in mind, and spirit that makes it hard to contemplate and to receive your grace. We ask, Lord, that you remove these obstacles and that you would equip us to be your hands and feet, your shoulder, that it would be your heart that guides our words and all of our actions. We pray, Lord, for this nation, for the President, for the Congress, for the courts. We pray, Lord, for wisdom in the midst of this COVID crisis. We pray, Lord, for the courage to acknowledge what it is that we do not know and for the, the, the commitment to take the steps, even if they are hard steps, to do what is right, to protect neighbors and friends and people that we do not know. We thank you, Lord, for doctors and nurses, those who are involved in research and care. We pray, Lord, that you would protect them and make them wise. We pray, Lord, for the world, for persons near and far who are in the midst of struggle, not only from COVID, but from the other impacts that have not changed, for lack of food or potable water, for clothing and companionship. We pray, Lord, to be about your business, as those who recognize that we are all made in the image and likeness, that Jesus Christ is the author and perfecter of our faith. Help us, Lord, to follow him and to seek to become more and more like him. We pray for our church, for our bishop, for the leaders in every community. We ask, Lord, that you would help us to be inspired and to allow your spirit to guide us and others. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.
May God, who is creator, redeemer, and sustainer, fill you to overflowing, that you may know the peace and presence and power of God, that you may be fruitful in your life and inspiring others to be fruitful in theirs. Go now in the expectation that the ground you stand upon is holy ground, because God goes with you this day and always. Amen.